On your funeral edition of Locked On Blue Jays, the Toronto Blue Jays season is over at the hands of the Minnesota Twins, thanks to some bad offense and some even weirder pitching decisions, but they did make the Minnesota Twins really think about a couple of not very important pinch hitting calls, so who's the real winner here? You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. (sighs) Hey, what's going on? And welcome to another edition of Locked On Blue Jays, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is, uh, as we speak, Wednesday, October the 4th. You're probably hearing this Thursday, October the 5th. Either way, it doesn't matter. The season's over. The Blue Jays are done. And we are here to talk about it. We being Sean Woodley, host of Locked On Raptors, and a very angry Toronto Blue Jays fan. And I'm joined, of course, by another very angry Toronto Blue Jays fan, Mike DiStefano from Locked On Leafs, here to pick up the pieces after the Toronto Blue Jays go out 2-0 to the Twins in Game 2, 2-0 in the series. They score one run in two. Hey, they got 15 hits, baby. Look at those singles flying all over the field. Don't you love singles, Mike? Uh, There's there's a lot to dissect from this uh, wretched couple days of baseball. We will get into Vladimir Guerrero Jr. getting picked off at second mere moments after telling Bo Bichette to calm down at the plate. We will get into what comes next for a Blue Jays team that... Probably does need some change, but probably won't change all that much because inertia is a powerful thing. But off the top, Mike, uh, how are you feeling? What's your general sense of mood after uh, another lifeless postseason appearance by your Toronto Blue Jays, who now share the distinction with the Tampa Bay Rays of having the longest playoff losing streak of baseball at seven games? Fun. Fun stuff. Um... (laughs) All right, forgive me, okay? If I start to get ranty to a, an, an annoying point, just stop me, okay? <laughs> I'll Let's put up the stop sign like I'm yeah. Luis Rivera, and you can blow right through it. <laughs> I'll bow it. I'll probably bow it. Odds are I will. But, you know, at least put the signs up and be like, all right, let's rein it in a little bit because I am not a happy Blue Jays fan. Like, that was just, again, a pitiful, pitiful performance by – the Toronto Blue Jays, and it's not necessarily that they, like, okay, maybe pitiful is a wrong word to use because you got good pitching and, you know, you excellent got Excellent pitching. The pitching was excellent. so good, Mike. Excellent. Excellent <laughs> pitching. You're right. And then you even got on base a lot. Like the Blue Jays were on base a lot. They had runners in scoring position. There was some offense to this team tonight. Like me but- when I go to Wendy's, the king of the single. But they can't just like here's here's nope, how okay. I'm going to summarize this game and summarize this series. OK, they are who they thought we were at the end of the they day. They are who they thought we were. Come on. They Mike. are who we thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get that quote correct there. So it's all right. This team has us all sixes and sevens, and that's fine. We don't have to. They didn't show up. Why do we have to show up for the podcast with proper yeah, syntax? Exactly. Huh? But, like, let's be honest. They are exactly who we thought they were, right? A team who had really good pitching, who struggled to find offense and to manufacture offense. It wasn't necessarily the batting average that was an issue with the Blue Jays this year. It was actually scoring runs. It was the problem with the long ball, and it was a problem cashing in on guys once they got into scoring position. What they leave? Six, seven guys in scoring position tonight that they left on base. And there's Does Vlad two... count as being left in scoring position after getting picked off? Absolutely that, that count. counts. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Bichette, Bichette still had five pitches before the pickoff to try and cash those guys in. So 100% mm-hmm. that counts. And that okay. just goes to show, because one other tiny minor thing that was an issue this season was base running and how they acted when they were out there on the bases. Uh, That was also, you know, a talking point throughout the season. So it just goes to show they are who we thought they were doorknobs when they're on the base pass for whatever reason. (laughs) Um, Because that's two nights in a row where they made some very, you know, poor decisions that came back to bite them on the base pass. And it's two nights in a row where they just were unable to get guys across the plate. One run 
over the course of 18 innings. That's not going to win you games in the postseason. And it's exactly what was the concern coming into this series. You knew you were going up against a very talented pitching staff in the Minnesota Twins, but the Blue Jays, you hope that they were going to, you know, reset, find some offense that is is there. We've seen it from this team in the past, but unfortunately, they are who we thought they were, and they just were unable to score. They were unable to come up with those timely hits when they had the opportunities, and it cost them the season. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's just keep on the offense here. Why not? Because we'll get into the burrito stuff momentarily because that deserves a whole segment of its own. This really was such a familiar loss. I mean, yesterday's loss was also familiar. Just the 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 painstaking nature of this team. You know, you think back to last year, right? They lose that disastrous second wild card game against the Mariners. But like, at least in that game, even when they went down, there was like a little bit of, wow, this team can kind of score runs at any time it wants. So maybe there's a chance they earn this thing back after blowing the 8-1 lead. I felt like in like the fifth inning of this game when it's 2 nothing, they're not scoring any runs here. This is just the routine we've seen from this team over and over all season long. And again, yeah, it's not the OPS. Like they were ninth in the majors and OPS plus. Great. Uh, they were not a good power team. They couldn't get extra base hits. They had just one extra base hit in this game or this entire series. Um, like, or sorry. A lot of it. It should have been a double at the first part of the game. Losing my mind here. Yeah. One extra base hit in two games, singles all over the place. They finished 16th in the majors in home runs. When you look at the lineup, this team has, they should not have been 16th in the majors in home runs. And when the playoffs come around and you can't string together hits, because pitchers are really good in the playoffs. You need to be able to bail yourself out with home runs. And there was just like nothing doing in that regard. Yeah, Vlad wired one to center field that, you know, he got a good hold up. Maybe it's a home run in other parks, but it's not in target field. Nothing you can do about that. Matt Chapman yesterday comes just feet short. Sure. But like again today, by and large, again yeah, today, bro. the, oh. the, oh, the foul Should ball, the, the base, base is loaded. Clearing. Base is clear and yeah. double what that should have been. And once again, this guy was a foot and a half away from a, a, a game series altering hit. And he's just mm -hmm. a foot and a half to the left, just like yesterday when he hit that home, that what looked to be maybe a home run, that long ball into the warning track against the mm -hmm. wall. If that was a foot and a half to the right, good chance it goes out. And same thing, slaps a double, base is loaded, and instead it's a foot and a half to the left, it's foul, and then he grounds into a double play. Um, on like the next pitch or two, and it just completely the next pitch really killed everything. Stuff, yeah, it, it killed <laughs> everything. I, I that was the moment where I realized that was it, right? That was the hmm. chance for the Jays to put some runs up, get some offense. You know that bullpen's going to come in now and just continue to shut it down. And that was ultimately where the heart broke for me, for for uh, Blue Jays fans. I think when Matt Chapman for a second game in a row. Um, just missed on a a an, a game altering hit. Uh, it just was very very disappointing. You get the fourth inning, the Barrios thing, which we'll get into in a sec. You get the fifth inning, the Vlad pickoff with Bo at the plate with two guys on second and third. After and like a hitter. wild pitch sets it up too, like they like it was handed to them. And then you get the Matt Chapman situation. And, and, you know, I feel bad for Matt Chapman. Like, I don't blame him necessarily. Like, he had the two. They are two Matt Chapman swings and, like, feet away from winning this series, arguably, yeah. over these two games, considering how good yeah. the pitching was. And so, yes, part of this is baseball being baseball. Like, we can't, you know, boil everything down with this team to two games where some weird things happened, sure. But, like... The symptoms of this offense being anemic were present all year long, and they reared their ugly heads in this one, no doubt. And, like, I still can't get over the Vlad pickoff, man. I I love Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Yes, it was not his best season this year. Yeah, you want to see him just kind of come out and do what he did back in 2021, where he was, like, the second best hitter in baseball behind yeah. freaking Shohei Otani, right? Like, that's what you want, but it, it just... <sighs> I, I like I, look at got another situation. What are you supposed to do, man? Like it, it's just like be like you're telling Bo to calm down. Be aware of what's going on in your surroundings, man. I I just it was maddening stuff from a guy who all they want to do is defend Vlad Jr. But how do you defend that? Yeah, it's situational baseball, man. You've got your best best hitter at the plate. 
Yeah. Um, and you've got a man on second and third. And like realistically, any base hit into the outfield, there's a chance Vladdy could score and tie this ball game. You got to make sure that you do not get an out on the base pass to end this thing. It's a full count too. So worst case scenario, there's an opportunity also to get the walk and bring up BGO. You got a full, like there was so many good things that could have came from that at bat. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, you know, the guy's kind of lackadaisical, not really paying attention to what's going on behind him. You get Correa inching in. And I mean, a really heads up play by the Minnesota twins to, you know, make that play. Obviously you got to tip your cap to, to them and that type of defense and that type of play. But if you're Vladdy and if you're a chase fan, you're certainly not happy with the outcome that happened there. Cause it really took away a prime opportunity, arguably next to, I mean, that could have been the most prime opportunity. That and Chapman is probably right up there. Both of them were terrific chances for this team to finally cash in some runs and probably tie the game if either of those things happen. And uh, unfortunately, it's a pickoff and that ends the inning. And now you got to get Bo up at the plate with the bases empty instead of a man, two guys in scoring position. And, and like a fresh pitcher two. coming he's in. He's two and... for two. He'd been attacking and he'd been raking against, uh, you know, against the pitcher. So that also is a, very annoying um, for that to to occur at that point in the game. Yeah, man. Uh, hey, look, credit, at least on some level, to the Twins for the level of their pitching. You know, Yohan Duran is truly nasty. I don't know how you're supposed to hit a 98 mile an hour splinker. That's a pitch? A splinker? Okay, sure. So, He's making pitches up now. Awesome. Um, like He was great. Toy- Sonny Gray was great. Toying but, yeah. with emotions, though. Toying with emotions, mm. right? You start out oh, yeah. with the ninth <laughs> inning, and you see the situation with the, the finger and a, and a blister. Is he bleeding? Like, what's going on here? And then you see the first two pitches of that at-bat go completely awry, and you're like, does this guy not have it? Like, is this yeah. is this going is this a to Cole be a Cole Reagan situation going like, on is, here? <laughs> is this a problem? Is this an Aaron Sanchez type of situation we got going <laughs> on here? Could this benefit the Blue Jays? Is this the the uh, you know the chance, the opportunity here for them to try and get on the board? And uh, yeah, it just took two pitches, or I guess a third pitch, for him to realize, oh no, I can get this thing into the zone. Figured it out, and three up, three down. And uh, that was that was the end of the series. But for about two pitches there, I think there was some hope in Jays fans. It was quickly, quickly ripped away, though. Yeah, hope of like the faintest degree, probably, considering the way they'd hit in this series. Uh, We'll come back on the other side. We're going to get into the Jose Barrios controversy. And boy, oh boy, did this make me extremely mad. And I'm still mad about it because it was really stupid. We will get to this in just one (laughs) second. But first... Got to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Snap into the action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Maybe you're a disenchanted Toronto Blue Jays fan looking to turn your attention to the NFL season, much like our pal Mike DiStefano here. Uh- <laughs> well, I'll mention this. There was yeah. another reason why I was mad about the Vladdy pickoff. I may or may not have had a Boba Shett, uh RBI away from hitting on a parlay. Mm. There's a chance that could have happened on that play, and it did not. So, yeah, that's FanDuel that's, got the best of me this time. That's the game we play. But yeah, right now you can go to FanDuel. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over unders, and more. You can even go and put money on to win the World Series next year. Don't do it, but you could if you wanted to, in theory. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, Mike. Look, I don't like feeling like this about the baseball team I like. I would like the baseball team I like to make me feel good. However, they do things like take out a pitcher who's absolutely cruising in the middle of the third inning for seemingly, like, no benefit at the end of the day. You say Kikuchi comes in for Brios after three-plus. Brios, I believe, gives up a walk or a single to start the third inning, puts a guy on first, and they make the call to bring in You say Kikuchi to go up against Max Kepler in that lefty-lefty matchup. And I guess sort of the bigger-brained idea here was, oh, we bring in You say Kikuchi, and then maybe that forces Rocco Baldelli to... uh 
consider making some decisions with his lineup and take some guys out for later in the game so they're not available. The problem with this decision, I mean, there's many problems. But to me, the thing I can't really get past, Mike, is you take out Barrios in that third. There's already a guy on first. It's a scoreless game. That is a high leverage situation in the game. Full stop. It's a winner go home game. It's a scoreless game. There's a guy on first base. That's high leverage. Full stop. You bring in Kikuchi out of the bullpen. And in theory, part of the benefit here is sort of a long game. You make them have to take out a couple of their lefty batters in order to, you know, get the right matchups and all that for later in the game. So they take out Alex Kirilov and they take out Matt Walner in order to put righties in. Those righties face Kikuchi in the middle of said high leverage situation, so you don't even get the benefit of the matchups. They later in the game don't even pinch hit for Edouard Julien, the guy you figure you're trying to get out of the game. Just like totally outfoxing themselves, big brained, like like totally getting way too cute with this. I was steaming. Like, look, we Sean. talked about you say Kikuchi at the start of this series. Hey, this guy could be valuable in the event that a starter gets tuned up. What's the opposite of getting tuned up? It's what Barrios was doing today through three innings, and yet the stat powers that be, and far be it for me to like criticize the analytics, because I love the analytics stuff, but sometimes you get over right. your skis with it, and you make decisions like this, and you cost yourself potentially two runs and lose the game. Mike, go off. This was really, really dumb, right? This was this was this is a this was a fireable offense, not just for John Schneider, but you go up or management because that wasn't the whole just war a room. Sh- yeah, was not, not a Schneider, Schneider decision. This was an organizational decision that if they got to a point where they got you know deep enough in a ball game and there was a righty lefty matchup that they didn't like, they're going to go to Kikuchi, and, and no matter how the game was going, how Barrios was pitching. That was going to be the case, and that's exactly what happened here. This is what happened, Sean, when computers run a baseball team. This is what (laughs) happened, and that's what we just saw occur, and it came back to bite them in the ass. And for that, I'm not even kidding. I'm not being hyperbolic. This is maybe where I'm going to start getting a little tangenty. So, again, show me the uh, the stop sign. But honestly, Sean, fireball offense. John Schneider, I'm waving you around for the people who are listening. Out of here. Maybe even Mark Shapiro. He might be able to to last because he's got a. Oh, he's got renovations to finish. Mike. There are Come some on renovations. Now. There's some. He's got fans to, to price out. There are, but honestly, <laughs> when it comes to the GM, when it comes to the coach, I think that just based, not just based on that one decision alone, but basically how the season has gone. You look at the trades that were made in this off season, and you could certainly, you know, kind of scratch your head. Sean, who was the one who struck out to end the ball game and end their season? Who was the player? It was Dalton Varsho. That is oh, true. Oh, was it now? Mm. Who had a big old home run last night for the Diamond Max? It was Gabby Marino. Gabby <laughs> Marino, Sean. So let me tell you, okay? I am not too pleased with a couple of the decisions that were made, the trades that were made. Sure, it's hindsight's 2020, but guess what? This is now reality now. And I think you 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 honestly cannot go into next season with uh with this group i think they've 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 bungled the situation multiple times unfortunately i think it's going to cost a couple of people their jobs and namely it's for me it's it's got to be john schneider and i believe that the general manager ross atkins also should be held accountable and probably will cost him his job as well that's just how i feel uh, I've, I've i felt this way right from the beginning of the season i said to myself this team probably needs a nlcs berth to save jobs and they didn't get it they didn't even get a single postseason uh, other win. league and make it to the to the final mike come on now <laughs> well that's what like it's 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 just absolutely i'm just i'm just being a, a dink for uh, you uh innocently miss saying a letter in the alcs nlcs uh, tr- uh, yeah sentence, alcs sorry alcs I'm, yeah. I'm just i'm yeah. mad and i'm lashing out i'm sorry okay <laughs> <laughs> but just like so here's a here's a here's an anecdote right a story that i was told many many years ago um mm-hmm. a background source i'm not going to tell you tell you who it was but if somebody worked in the organization i was speaking with him about the blue jays this was pre-pandemic but still the shatkins era and <laughs> he told me um you know he said listen these decisions that are made with this group right now like it was gibby at the time and then it rolled into uh, it, it rolled into Montoyo, and I guarantee you, same things situation here with Schneider. A lot of the decisions that are made are not being made by the manager, and they're not being made mm-hmm. by the GM. Even it's being made by a couple of guys on the computers, 
and, and mm-hmm. whether it's trades or it's in-game situations, that's how they've been rolling in the Shapiro and Atkins era. And I think what you saw was that blow up in their face tonight. And that is the biggest reason I was told this years ago, and we've seen it come back and bite them in the ass time and time again. I think today's decision to take out Barrios to put in Kikuchi for absolutely no reason. When the guy is dialed in and pitching, you paid this guy $130 million more than any other pitcher you've ever paid in franchise history. And you take him out of the game after three innings for Kikuchi. When he's cruising. Kikuchi's been great. I don't want Kikuchi catching strays here either. It was just a dumb process decision, full on. It just doesn't make sense. Like, when you really look at this decision, made zero sense. And uh, obviously, again, this is, to go back to my original point, this is what happens when computers run baseball teams. And for that, if that's how, you know, these guys who are currently up at the top making the decisions think that's how baseball needs to be played and operated, I don't want them leading this franchise. I really do not. So for me, fireable offense, what happened tonight. Um, and, and, and you know, obviously we'll see over the coming days, weeks, whether or not it actually happens. But for me, won't be upset to see a couple of guys lose their jobs. I, I hate that um, from a personal viewpoint, but this is sports. It's a results-based business, and they've given you nothing to be happy about since they've come into the fold. Yeah, I mean, look, the Schneider thing, I do feel for him on some level because he's the one who has to bear the brunt of the sort of the, the machine making the decision. That said, you know, and many people have kind of noted this, like he is the manager. He could say, no, nah, we're not doing this. Look right? at Rios, Stop he's it. shoving. You Stuff know, it. I think uh, our, our friend Eric Kareen, Raptors reporter, who is also an afflicted Jays fan, made a pretty decent point, you know, sort of like there are a lot of people out there who are would sort of talking a big game about how they would openly defy their boss's wishes in the highest leverage of situations. I get that. But also, like, you are the manager. You're the one there. You're watching Barrios do what he's doing. You have Pete Walker there talking to Barrios, how he's feeling. Like, you know it's going well. Like, there's got to be some human element to this, right? And, like, I'm with you. Like, I am not someone who's like, get rid of the numbers. I love the numbers. I'm like fully immersed in the numbers. And I think anyone who's like analytics bad is just like, okay, well, you're okay. You're going to close off like a whole sector of information as you try to make decisions, but it can't no, be everything. No, 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 no. You have I, to have, I, yeah, hundred percent. They belong in the game, right? Like yeah. the best, whether it's hockey, it's baseball, it's football or basketball, Sean. Analytics has a part in every game and every sport, right? It's got to be a blend, though. Yeah, but it's got to be a blend. You can't just just go off of. There's got to be a gut feeling. There's a human element to it, right? And that's where you got to have stones. And obviously, Montoyo didn't have those stones because he had a couple of instances throughout his career where he made some questionable calls that you know came from up top and came from an analytics perspective. And then the exact same thing happened with John Schneider here. Um, now again, is, uh, is a different coach going to come in or a different manager going to come in and have the stones to make that type of decision? I don't know, but I can tell you what, if you don't get rid of the guy up top, you're going to have probably the same problem, which is why I think mm-hmm. we need sweeping changes with this organization. New manager, uh, like insubordination is an asset on the job pro the, the job posting. Just, uh, have you yelled at a boss before? Have you, have you totally gone against their wishes before? You're our guy. <laughs> Let's go. Um, yeah, like the, the, the Ross act. I did not love the off season of making the team less fun in the name of pitching and defense. Look, the pitching and defense was fantastic. There's no doubt about that. We'll talk about that as we kind of look at what's next for this team coming up, but like, this team had no joy. This team had no, like, they're the one team that didn't have, like, a fun home run thing after being the team that, like, started the whole thing. No, no fun for you. And, and it, it might just, be like, silly. It might be silly to suggest, but, like, could that have potentially played a part in the lack of offense this year? It could have, it's psychologically. It's, like, impossible to say, of course. And, and, like, it's hyperbolic to say that that's the reason. But, like, all these little things come together. And all I know is one thing. I did not enjoy watching this baseball team at all this season. And they kind of got the exact fate they deserved based on the product they put out there all year long. And, you know, while some decisions that the front office has made have been very good, obviously they've built this pitching staff, which rocks, and, like, they deserve credit for that. 
But the way they went about just, like, sapping the joy from this team, the way that ultimately, like, they didn't assemble an offense that could get it done when it needed to anyway, or all season long, the way, I don't know, did they renovate the stadium to make it harder to hit home runs for their own team? There's a whole thing. Like, that's just, we're getting way off track now. But, man, just, it it feels like it's so toxic and, like, the well is so poisoned now after the last couple playoff exits that... Just some kind of change, I think, is what anybody needs to feel sane going into next season after what we saw here, Mike. Uh, We're going to come back on the other side, try to get the plot back, and uh, assess what do we want to see happen this summer. It's all over now. There's nothing to do but cry and look ahead at the pretty uninspiring list of pending free agents around Major League Baseball. But we'll dig into what we'd like to see, what we think should happen, what will or won't happen, all coming up in just one second. Before that, however, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Bird Dogs, who make the most comfortable shorts you are ever going to wear. I have a couple pairs, super comfortable. My dad has a pair. They're his favorite pair of shorts in the whole wide world. My wife wears the Bird Dogs hat they sent us when she goes paddle boarding or goes and does exercise. It's a wonderful hat. Point is... Bird Talks makes really comfortable stuff that you want to have on your body. They have anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. And they're functional for any occasion, whether it's a golf round, a date, evening out, pool, workout, lounging, work. It's all there. And you can do it in your bird dogs. I have the the wonderfully comfortable hiking pants. They're super great. Just they, you can't go wrong. And they've also revolutionized underwear, as there is a built-in comfort lining built into every pair of bird dogs pants or shorts. And it is a game changer because who wants to wear extra layers of stuff if you don't have to? Go to birds, birddogs.com slash locked on MLB or enter the promo code locked on MLB at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off we promise you all right mike let's uh wrap this up with a look ahead this will uh for those out there be our final episode as the pop-up hosts of locked on blue jays it's been a pleasure doing this um but i certainly don't have the stomach to talk about this team anymore after what we've just seen and uh there will be a new host along at some point very soon we appreciate you rocking with us during the playoffs here if you jumped on for the very short ride was hoping this would be longer man was hoping we'd have a few weeks of talking jays ball but instead we need to think about winter meetings and other really fun things what do they do man like what's your sort of dream off season outlook here pending ufas abound matt chapman kevin kiermeyer uh brandon belt do you want any of those guys back maybe we start there or is it sort of like Look for a fresh start at all those different spots. You know, it sucks to lose Kevin Kiermeyer after a year, but after his comments about not wanting to play on turf anymore, I don't feel like he is long for the Toronto Blue Jays. Maybe different for Belt and Chapman. Where are you at with those guys, I guess, to start here? It's so unfortunate because, like, there was a time where I really, really wanted Chapman to be a Blue Jay long term. And I was like, mm-hmm. let's let's try and get this guy signed to a long term contract, you know, prior to the season. Like, let's not have to go through this year and basically uh, wait for him to make himself a bunch more money and then go to free agency. Now I'm kind of happy, actually, that they did not kind of, you know, go into that realm uh, early on and they let the season play out because. I mean, I'd like to bring him back at a certain cost. I know that there were comments that he made that he'd like to return to Toronto. Uh, I believe he spoke with somebody out in uh, in Minnesota about that today. One of the national writers was, was writing about it. Um, the price has got to be right, obviously, but it was, very dis- it was a very disappointing season. The defense, for sure, he's got that on lock. But offensively, you know, it was very disappointing. Uh, but typically he's been a home run guy. He's been a guy who could hit you 26 to 30 bombs a season. So can he get back to being that? If so, I think there is probably a role for him on this squad uh, to be the everyday third baseman for this, for this team. And hopefully this year was just a, a down year for Matt Chapman. Um, so he's someone who I consider bringing back as for the other two. I mean, to me, the one guy who I think really the Blue Jays should definitely want to bring back, I don't know if he's going to garner more money based off of the way that his season ended, is is probably Jordan Hicks out in the bullpen. If they can bring Jordan Hicks back, I think that would be the guy I would mainly want to return to the Blue Jays out of all of these UFAs that are out there. Yeah, Hicks, I mean, he's really fun. It's fun to watch a dude throw 102, but I also feel like 
they got Jordan Hicks for not a whole lot at the deadline, and you could probably do that again. Like, if this front office has proven anything, it's that they can build a really good bullpen. And so I wonder if maybe you let Hicks walk as opposed to paying him for whatever it's going to be in the future. But uh, I wouldn't be upset if he's back. It's not my money. I don't care. Um, Chapman, I kind of wonder if maybe this is the end of the line for Chapman in Toronto. It's a bummer. That wouldn't like, bother me either. Wouldn't bother it, me like, either. Yeah, like but you cool know guy. that he's gonna he's gonna rebound next year though. Like you know that's gonna be the case. Do so if you can live with that, that if you can live with that, then for sure let him go. Do we know that though? Like he was not like he didn't light the world on fire as an offensive player last year. He had the incredible start to this season, of course, but really, really awful, frankly, after May on. Like just a bad, bad season for Chapman. He's had injuries in the past. It's gonna cost you a lot of money, you would think. And you have Addison Barger and Aurelvis Martinez as two of your best prospects. Like maybe you just clear a spot for them. Davis Schneider maybe fills in. You just kind of have prospect fun over at third base. Maybe you make a big trade for a more sort of established guy or someone with more term on the deal. Maybe they go make another Matt Chapman trade, another Josh Donaldson trade to go find a star third baseman that way. Um, you know, there's only so many prospects I know this front office is willing to trade, but I wonder if maybe that's the solution there to just kind of really solidify that spot. It's going to suck to not have Matt Chapman's defense around because it's a joy to watch, but the hitting was the issue, man. And I just... I don't know if you can count on a serious bounce back for him. He kind of looked lost at times this year after that really great start. Yeah. And, you know, one month versus five months. And, you know, over the course of his two years in Toronto, like he was never outside of that one month this year, a total like machine or anything like that. He never really hit like the near MVP level he was at in Oakland before he got injured. I wonder if it's time with, with him. I'd love to see Brandon Belt back, honestly. Like, dude's really cool. He seems like a fun dude. He seems like a nice guy to have around. He's a very oh. good hitter, obviously. Obviously, yep. he's got the back spasms and stuff to battle with. But if you can get him back on a similar deal you got him this year, would not be sad about that at all. Kiermaier, I would imagine you're losing. Maybe you move far show to center. Maybe you find a different center fielder. But um, I think that, for me, is kind of where I'm at on the free agents. Is there... I, I mean... Is there a core member of the team? You like this is the thing. Like this is the weird spot they're in. Is the pitching staff is rock solid. They're locked in money wise with Gosman, Bassett, Burrito, Burrios for a long time. Kikuchi too. Like they should be really good pitching wise again next year. I don't think you're trading Vlad. You're not trading Bo. You're not trading Springer because no one's really going to trade for Springer at this point on no. that deal at this age. And I, I don't Janet think there's like going nowhere. Like no, Kirky, there's not really a core cool trade. Yeah, and so. It's got to be like addition via, you know, sort of prospect for good player trades or, uh, or and like, it feels kind of uninspiring to say this team is mostly going to look the same next year, but maybe the move is just you change the manager and get rid of the GM and you figure things out from there. Maybe that's how the, the sort of change for this offseason is implemented because there's not a whole lot to change on this roster. It's kind of stuck. It's weird, but... You know, I know on, on Lockdown Leafs, we were talking about how there's a lot of similarities and parallels between how things have gone down for the Leafs and the Jays the last couple of mm -hmm. off seasons where, you know, the, the stars and the offense kind of dries up. And, you know, for Toronto, this past off season for the Maple Leafs, we kept saying, OK, I think the, the GM and the coaching isn't the problem. It's the on ice product. They can't run it back with the same players. Funny enough, I think it's opposite for the Blue Jays, where I, th I think they can run it back with the same core, the same pitching staff, and the same main characters on offense. And if you get a change in the managerial position, you get someone up top who maybe can make a couple of tweaks. Uh, you know, I think that's probably best case scenario in the course of action. I prefer the Blue Jays to go in for a lot of different reasons. So I don't expect to see massive change uh, to this roster over the course of, you know, the off season. Uh, could we see a couple of position players, like you said, a, a Kier Meyer who started a lot of games this season, you know, is Whit Merrifield come back? Maybe, maybe not. Um, we'll see what happens with Brandon Bell who mainly DH, which is, a you know, sometimes a tough, you know, roster position to hold. Um, and then obviously Chapman's going to be probably the biggest question mark that we do have. Uh, that was an everyday player. But when it comes to the core, I think it's going to be pretty status quo. And look, that doesn't have to be a bad thing either, right? Like the, the pitching staff was awesome. This was an 89 win team that everybody agreed should have won more than 89 games. Like there's clearly something good as a backbone to this baseball team, but there's also clearly a little something missing. 
And you'd hope they can go find that this summer. You know, again, maybe you think about the Astros, right? Like the Astros keep on churning out excellent, excellent prospects to just kind of fill in whenever a guy leaves. You would hope that an Addison Barger or an Arelvis Martinez can be one of those guys. We kind of saw the Buffalo boys do a little bit of that this year, but they're not any of those guys. Horwitz, Clement, even Schneider. None of those guys are like studs, you know, future everyday right. players for you or anything like that. In all likelihood, maybe Schneider, but he was really grim down the se- stretch of the season too. I-, I think, you know, go get Juan Soto. I don't know. <laughs> like, go get, I go mean, make a big, like, go add a big bat. Like, that's kind of where I'm at. Go find a big bat that it's like a no doubt, stick him in behind Vlad, Bo, Springer, and just like add some juice to this lineup. Whether it's Juan Soto, whether it's Shohei Ot- That's what I was going to bring up. I was he can't say. pitch next year, but he can hit. <laughs> he can hit. He signed to a long-term deal. Now you got both. You got both. You got yourself an ace. You got yourself a quality slugger. That is a possibility. It's not like Rodgers is, uh, you know, they don't have deep pockets or anything. So, hell, eh, ticket yeah, prices are going up next year once they uh, make the lower bowl unattainable no. for normies like us. Uh, so they better uh, invest that money in cool players. I'd be down for that big time. <sighs> Just so, there's some uh, reactions are coming in, Mike, before we wrap up here about uh, the reactions to pulling Barrios. Whit Merrifield, quote, I hated it. Uh, Vlad, quote, everyone was surprised. When the players are on your own team are like, what are we doing here? Yep. Something's gone wrong. Uh, Mike, this was a bit of an off-the-rails episode, but uh, it was a bit of an off-the-rails performance by the Blue Jays in the in the postseason, so I think it was fitting. Was it? Of- was it? It was pretty fitting. It was pretty pretty, pretty much how we should have expected it to go. <laughs> I guess just, like, slightly more embarrassing than we would have hoped, but yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's been fun doing this show with you, man, and thanks to everyone, for, again, for, for rocking with us over the last week or two. As we've uh, tried to fill in here, we will have a new Lockdown Blue Jays host for you soon to take you through the off season and into next year. And hey, maybe they'll have us back as guests because we're so accomplished in the art of Blue Jays podcasting now. We got that on our CV, baby. Uh, so bring us back to yell and grunt and moan about the stupid Blue Jays. And we'd be thrilled to do that. Either way, Mike, anything that the good people out there should know where they can where can they find you now that our brief tenure covering the Toronto Blue Jays is over? Yeah, I mean, our, our tenure of covering them on a daily basis is over, but I'll certainly keep tweeting about them throughout the offseason, whatever moves are made or not made, namely whether or not we see, uh, you know, firings or not. Uh, you all know, I guess, what where I stand on what should happen this offseason. Uh, but, yeah, you can follow me on uh, Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck or X, I suppose it's now called, uh, where I'm, I'm, you know, I'm prone to share an opinion or two on that platform um so you can go follow me there also if you're a leaf fan or just a toronto sports fan in general i am the host of locked on leafs as well and uh you can find me there uh yeah locked on leafs wherever you get your podcasts and for me i go from covering one maddening team that's really good at pitching and defense and not so good at offense to another team that's very good at defense and not so good at offense the toronto raptors uh, i'll be covering the raptors every day all season long you can go support the show over there and uh you know subscribe rate review youtube all that good stuff much appreciate the support and uh that's gonna do it for us and for the toronto blue jays season congrats to the twins i guess the twins are fun they're pretty harmless they're probably like the 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 I suppose Minnesota. I like it when a tortured fan base gets like a little bit of joy. Uh, I get to live enviously. It's great. Uh, <laughs> I want to make one up. more comment. I do want to make one Please more do. comment quickly, and it's about Jose Barrios and how well he took the situation. Right, you Did know, not have would... to take it so nicely at all. He could have gone upset. full Garrett Cole and screamed if he wanted to. <laughs> could have and and honestly i would have completely welcomed and accepted that based off of the situation where everybody was surprised it was going to happen i'm sure he was even surprised but still you know made sure before he even left the mound to say all right it's all good you guys got this you guys got this get it done for me and then you saw also he was in the on the dugout had a one-on-one conversation with john schneider and he was even saying yep i get it i totally get it Hopefully they can get it done. He was up on the step the entire time, uh, you know, cheering on his teammates, not sulking, even after Kikuchi gave up the couple of runs there. Um, so I, I do also want to just give an absolute tip of the cap 
to uh, to Jose Barrios. Tough situation, one that I think 99.999% of people are still racking their, their brains around, including probably Barrios. But, man, did he take that in strides, and it showed a lot of leadership and uh, just the type of person that he is to not you know blow up in a situation where a lot of people could have and would have understood. I would love to know the person out there who was like, actually, I think the decision was good. Uh, I was thinking about like playing that character coming into today's show, but I figured that would take up too much time. I don't need to be playing characters in my last show on Lockdown Blue Jays. That is going to do it. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And again, find uh, all of the Lockdown Podcast shows wherever you get your net, whatever you get your networks. What am I doing? I am tired. Uh, wherever you get your podcasts on the podcast apps and on YouTube. And keep an eye out for new Lockdown Blue Jays hosts coming to you soon. They will probably be a little bit less aggro than us. Uh, thank you so much. We'll talk to you another time. Bye bye.